why do we come in before the sun comes down? Why, how come we don't go out before the sun comes up? So explain this to me. And he told us about the giant men in the woods. And he told us about the little people. He talked about the deer woman. And, and he goes, these are things that we just don't really talk about. And we shouldn't talk about them. And like me being me, why? My curiosity took over as a child all the way up to the present day. Why? Creatures, you know, what they call hairy man, or what common people today call the Bigfoot. We've uh, always had uh, this figure in, in our culture, and all around our tribe. There's, there's uh, songs, stories based upon this person, you know, this entity, a, a spirit, basically. Since we've been here, we heard one yell. I've already seen some kind of movement and stuff around in the timber, so hopefully we get to get some really good audio from this. Sunny boy? Yes. You guys stay on this side, stay behind Pete. Guns are on the right? Yeah, guns are on the right. Really Derek got the gun in the You see the trees blowing? Where? Right there. Look at this. What is, it? what is it? It may look simple to you, but these limbs uh -huh. are not part of this tree. They're a different kind of limb. They're stacked. You know, They'll make art, but you have to know what you're looking for. This is like a teepee. See it? Mm -hmm. They're crossed just right. They'll do this. They'll even make small tripods like teepees. Oh, so that's it right there. Yeah, see? It was creative. Yeah. I'll barely move it. Shit. I'm starting to throw things. Me neither. When they're here, you'll know. Trust me. But I'm just not feeling it right now. Mm -hmm. When they want to decide, when they want to want you to know, they'll let you know. But I mean, honestly, when it goes dead silent, the way it is right now, we got one close to us. What was that? Uh, my name is Brian Frigio. We're here today uh, from the NAME, and that stands for Native American Mystery Explorers, going through some of our oral history, our traditions of keeping stories alive and, and uh, passing them on to future generations. I've always been told a lot of stories about, about this area, this northern part of Oklahoma community. Uh, a lot of our tribes here have a lot of these stories that were uh, passed on from when I was a, a little guy, you know, being out in the country, out in the woods, going to powwows, things like that. So it's kind of what we're looking at is um, kind of just, you know, some of the, the history of this area. Uh, maybe some stories that you grew up with. So she, she started smelling something, like something dead or something. And so she went to the back door, we had a screen door. And uh, she kept, the closer she got, the you know, worse the smell got. And so um, all of a sudden she looked up and there was a big hairy guy, bigger than the door, just covered with hair like a gorilla or something. And she slammed the door, you know, but.
trees are still alive. Yeah. yeah. follow us through here before, just watching us and observing. Now that was a knock. That was a tree knock? That was a knock, yeah. Right There's rumored to be an old woman that dresses in black that takes care of these woods along with the Bigfoots. But she hasn't been seen in over 20 years. Keep at least one thing going. got quiet, I heard like, pop, 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 pop. Every now and then down here, you, you, you've been in, you know, like back in grade school, you get them two woods, mm -hmm. clack, 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 you'll hear that down here. But you can't figure out where it's coming from. We pinpointed it to a tree, but we couldn't see nothing around it. I went around this way, he went around the other way, couldn't pinpoint it. But after a while, because he's always wanted to see a Bigfoot, then that intense feeling came over him. And this time, it was overpowering when I felt it, and I was over 50 yards away from it. So he was... Does anybody ever camp out here? <laughs> the story I want to tell is uh, um, early 2004, uh, I was just a really young man, I was 22 years old, and I uh, got asked to uh, come work for the White Eagle Police. I went on a call uh, to uh, some rel you know, relatives of mine. Uh, my uncle lived in our, was living in our family house out there. Uh, my cousin, his son, I guess had an altercation with uh, his girlfriend. And their folks came up from 
wherever they were from down south and they were picking her up and I guess, you know, they just got a big old, you know, you know, it wasn't just altercations verbally, no physical. And so I came out there just to, they wanted them to stay out of the yard and not come into the yard and she was collecting her belongings and I came there to just kind of stand by. I pulled in the yard and this is our family house and so I kind of, there's the driveway and as soon as you come in you kind of pull to the right there's another area where two cars can park there in the yard. And I pulled in and I got out of the car, came inside, I talked to everybody and you know, I told them, you know, I'm just here to help you guys out, make sure nothing goes on out here. And um, all the time I'm in there, I'm writing stuff down, you know, saying, you know, what happened, this and that. And my aunt, my uh, youngest cousin come out, they're on the porch and uh, she comes back in, she said, who's your partner? She said, I know you had a partner. I was like, I don't got a partner. I said, everybody says that they can see somebody in that car, and I just kind of laughed it off. She said, well, he's out there, and he's smoking in your car. <laughs> and uh, I was like, what? And she said, there's someone outside, and they're smoking in your car. So I got mad. I was like, man, I said, these little kites out there came up here. I said, someone's in my car. Well, I was blaming these uh, other people here. And I ran outside, and sure enough, you could see that smoke just trailing out of my car. And during that time, I didn't smoke. There wasn't cigarettes in the car. There wasn't a lighter in that car. I ran out there, grabbed that door open, swung it open. I was on the passenger side, so I reached down, just opened that door open. A little red light came on. There's nobody in there, but you could just smell that smoke. And after that, you know, we had uh, people come in and smoke everything off. We did the appropriate things. We took the gun and the badge and we placed it with him up there where he's buried at. And since then, we had, I didn't have no problems with anything coming around me no more. I was raised traditionally, so we're part of the, the uh, Bird Clan, and we have a medicine man there, Dave Lewis. We had just moved into this home in Broken Arrow. It was a two-story home, and there wasn't, it was barely new. There wasn't any way that we would think that anything could get inside the home. But we kept hearing noises up in the, one of the upstairs rooms back in the far corner. Um, so Bobby and inspected to see if a bird or whatever could get inside there, whatever noise. Would, oh, look, you did find a bird, didn't you? A little hawk. Well, there was a little hawk up there, and what he was doing was flying around trying to get out. Somehow he got into the house. He was in there flying around the room. And not long after that, a friend of ours died. He had been in the home for just one night, and he died and we heard more noises. So the second time we heard noises, we called in uh, the medicine man, for the one for our family, Dave Lewis, and he came and uh, he checked the whole house out, he checked all, any place that anything might be able to get into that home, and he said he could find no openings. So he had us leave, yeah, all, the, all, the, all of us, the whole family had to leave, but he smoked the whole house, with cedar and whatever else, his other medicines that he produced. And then he took tobacco and put it around the front yard and the backyard. And then afterwards he talked to us and he says, you know, he goes, well, I can't, he says, I don't sense anything evil. He says, I don't know how the birds got in there. He says, but you know you're part of the bird clan. And he says, I don't know how it got in there, but there's nothing evil in the house. And he says, but I'll, I'm putting the tobacco out there just to protect you all, you know, in case it is evil, whatever it is. He said, but I can tell you this. He says, you're going to have to start looking out for something big to happen in your life. And that's how he put it. He says, I can't tell you if it's, he says, right now I don't sense anything bad. He says, it's, he says, it's not bad that I, anything I sense. And I said, okay. And it wasn't like, but two months later, my dad, who was a big man, <laughs> about 250 pounds, had a stroke. And then after he left the rehab center, we brought him to our home, that home, because it was already rehabbed and there was a way we could get his wheelchair in. The bathroom was fixed where he could take his wheelchair in there and we could take care of him. So to us, that, that's basically what it was just preparing us for something big in our lives. Uh, tonight, right now, the community is good. East Timbers, no. 
Um, I went down there a while ago before you guys got here just to check it out and I got down there and it's a very strong vibe of you should not be here, get out. You're not needed or wanted here at this time. So I stuck it out long as I could and after that, yeah, I couldn't take it no more. I was probably there less than maybe five minutes, six minutes and I had to get out of there myself because the vibe was pretty intense. And as soon as I got out of there, got maybe within 100 yards of it, pulled over, decided to give you a ring ding, give you a heads up. It's not a good night to be down there. A heavy, you're not wanted. It's a vibe of get out. Um, basically, you're not wanted here at this time. And you know the vibe. You both know the vibe. And, um, but magnify it times 10. It's that strong down there, and it's just you're not wanted here at the time. I ran across this feeling one other time, and it was with me and Bruce. And uh, that vibe was that strong. We did not get out of the vehicle. We just turned around and left. It was that bad. Sasquatch activity is pretty high in this area, especially in the early springs, midsummers. Right here where we're standing, we actually had people that actually saw a Sasquatch standing right in this area. Where we're, we were actually filming right now. And it was bold enough to come out underneath the lights right here and just stand here and look at everything. People saw it right over there at that house. They saw it. So. And we're just down from the East Timber. Yeah, we're just right down the road from the East Timber. Here. We were already hearing uh, a lot of activity, a lot of sound, different sounds, some, like some different animals, some dogs, um, some other sounds. Not really sure if it's a. Uh, Coyote, wolf, uh, maybe wild dogs, not sure, but it's getting pretty close over coming from the East Timbers. Um, we're here at Pete Buffalo Head, uh, sharing some stories, you know, just about you know things that, that are known out here, the history that, that's taken place here with the Ponca people since, since they've been here in this area. Not really sure, the, the vibe's a little different tonight, but I think we're going to go down into the timber, uh, out to the spot, and kind of see see what the feeling is, see how close we can get. Trackers, guides tonight. Doing a little exploring. Name style. Walk down the other one a little bit. Now we're going to head back to the east.
Guys, we know if you see huh? You see the red light, the red yeah. eyes? That's what they were saying. Hey, you see red eyes, they were real low. They were talking about they could be real low or <laughs> something was down to the east. Uh we seen it. Do you have the camera going? Mm -hmm. Uh we seen the eyes. Didn't really come toward us or go the other way, then they just blinked off. So, definitely seen two eyes. We were walking that direction for less than 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Didn't take long. Didn't really hear anything. Just seen the eyes all of a sudden. It was in this area. And then it blinked off. This area was known for <clears throat> people hearing things, seeing things. I just seen some something. Were you rolling? Good. This is the location we were at last night. Uh, as you can see, it's a pretty pretty old little gravel road here. Um, this is where we got the footage of uh, whatever we saw last night, which appeared to be two eyes, red eyes, bright red, huge eye balls. So uh, you can check out the video, look at it. All I know is we came down this road, we were facing to the west, and we walked uh, west out of the car um, in front of the car maybe for 30 yards and then I felt something behind us so I wanted to walk behind the car which would be back in the east direction and uh, started that direction walking back uh, you can see at night it's it's pretty it's, it's kind of shady right now during the day it's middle of the, of the afternoon so uh, at night can you imagine how dark it was last night um, it was pretty much pitch black. The moon wasn't out, and uh, this whole road is kind of covered over with still still a lot of leaves on foliage on the on the trees. So um, it was dark. Walking in the easterly direction, I sh was shining my flashlight. I seen uh, two red eye, bright red eyeballs, and uh, I was like, "Whoa, what is that?" Because they were straight red, and. Um, I don't know how far it was. It's hard to judge at night in that with that kind of darkness. You know, I I'd say maybe 40 yards, 50 yards, which would be probably pretty close to the end of this road. Uh, so I was looking at him, 
they were moving around left to right, probably two or three feet off the ground, and uh, it made me stop in my tracks. You know, I, it looked it looks kind of weird looking. So uh, I was wondering, like, you know, what the hell is that? You know, that, that looks weird, moving around off a little off the ground, and then uh, Joe saw it. We were getting footage of it. You can see it in the footage. The, the uh, eyeballs were really bright, and um, I had my flashlight on it. And then the next thing, it was like six, probably seven feet in the air. I knew it was up higher in the air because I saw it raise up. And I was like, whoa. You know, I, I thought, man, what the heck is that? It looks crazy. And it kind of, you know, I had my adrenaline rush, you know, my heart started beating fast. And I had a feeling, you know, can't really describe the feeling unless you've been out in the, in the, in the woods, in the timber, in the country, you know, and you get this kind of feeling that something's there and it's close and it's, it's, a powerful, um, a powerful entity, you know, or being, or animal, or whatever, whatever it is that you're feeling. It definitely felt different. Um, and when I saw it stand up, I thought, what the heck, you know? And I had the flashlight on it. We were both not moving, and all of a sudden, it started, it blinked a few, probably two or three times, and then blinked off, it was gone. I was trying to see if my flashlight could show me an outline, a silhouette of something, in the distance, you know, down the road, and there was nothing there. And I couldn't tell if it was coming, if it was going away. All I knew was like, I felt like something was up. And I went back to the car, got back in the car, and uh, you know, I, at that moment, I wasn't really ready to see um, if it was coming, whatever it was. You know, I had, it was a strange feeling. So we got back in the car, we turned back around, and went to investigate. There's uh, mysteries within different uh, tribal towns all over the country, and uh, people have seen things, people have heard things, people had have, have had occurrences happening on the roads, back roads, and here, you know, in this place where we're at tonight, there's a lot of uh, events that have taken place tonight. Uh, it's a little different from where we're from, where I'm from, you know. Pretty much the same, like woods wise and the timbers. Uh, just, I usually don't like being in a place where I don't know, you know, the area. Tonight we heard it again. We, we might have gotten something on audio, we don't know. Just now, we're hearing something out here in the woods. Sticks are you know, hitting against each other in a rhythm. Right now, B, there's lights to your left flashing, and we see them in the camera, keep talking. And so, you know, it's, I think it feels comfortable around certain people and places, but, you know, it's still unknown, it's still mysterious, that's why we're out here. These, these stories, these, Things we were told. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Shut up, boy. You wake up, man. This guy, damn. Be real. Damn, neck turned like a damn owl, man. <laughs> see him on TV and uh, well I talked to this shaman and he said whip out some uh, uh, sage smoke your house off but no don't do that because sage is actually the weakest protection you got out there and it, it will never work it'll work for a day or two the next thing you know activities back um, the cedar that I use uh, I actually there's a special tree that we got here on the tribe Story goes, the tree was brought down from Nibrera when we moved down here from Nibrera. And it started out as a branch. And it was buried. And it took off from the branch into a tree down. And that's 
one of our sacred trees that we have here. Not a lot of people know about it, and I don't tell a lot of people about it. But um, our medicine men actually use that tree's cedar. But when I do pick my cedar, I'll go out, and when I get done picking, uh, I'll take it to Native American Church. Here, I need this blessed guys. Take care of it. Do what you guys got to do. Then after they get done with it and I dry it out, then I'll start mixing my other stuff with it. It's probably about a 14 different other ingredients that I'll go into it, and I call it my atomic smoke. You got regular cedar. This stuff right here, when you first smell it, will put goosebumps on your body because it's pretty hardcore stuff. Ghosts really do not like it. They can't stand it. I've even made an oil out of it. Mr. East. 